This is a walkthrough of the web page in the Earl Boyd's project. You can see here it's in priv static and it's called nm.html. I'm using MacVim. This is the nerd tree controller. So we have our standard license, open tag, some script, some global vars, the init function. I've got a log function, and log is down here, and all it does is console dir. Um, but if console dir, before I had it doing multiple things, it was spitting out to a, um, an HTML element, a div. And so I can just add that here. Wherever I call log, it'll do anything in there. I grab um, the elements, results, voids, and heat map. And I create a new web socket going to a local host address. And my cowboy web server has a path set up for animate, and it will start the animate web socket handler. Um, we, we hook up the on open event to the handle ws event function and the on message to handle ws message. Here's handle ws event, it takes the event. If the event type is open, we call handle web socket open. Uh, if we get uh, and then handle WebSocket open just logs that the WebSocket is open, so I know it's working. Handle WebSocket message looks inside the um, the data of the event, and if the first thing is uh, this open brace, we know it's a JSON object, and so we'll call draw with the data. Otherwise, we just log whatever it was. Uh, so we've got a message back from the WebSocket that wasn't some JSON data, we just log it. Here's our start function. It, uh, when we, let's see, when we have the WebSocket open, some at some point we call the start function and we send to the WebSocket, I need to rename this, it's not an example WebSocket anymore. We send it the height and the width. I don't bother JSON encoding this. It's fairly easy to parse out on the web page, although I probably should. And then we send start. Oh, this is hooked up to a start button. And then we send through the WebSocket whatever, to the handler, we send a start. It, it'll come through in binary on the other side. We just tell it to start, and then we click the stop button. Uh, we send stop. And it'll, again, it'll come through as binary. We have our draw function. So we're going to get some JSON. We're going to parse it with the JSON library or the JSON whatever uh, class object, I guess, or whatever it is in JavaScript. Then we're going to grab our canvas. Uh, using whatever was in the object, it'll have a canvas field. So we grab the canvas field out and then grab whatever canvas that is. So there's one for animation and one for the heat map. If we can get a context from that, then we'll um, then we'll grab. Uh, I think if it has a function for get context, then we'll grab the 2D context from it. So if it's a canvas object, then we'll blank out the canvas. Uh, so that's a function that we have down here. And then we'll, for each object we got back, uh, so the object itself will contain a list of objects. And for each one of those, we're going to call this anonymous function with that object. And we're going to grab the shape from that object. And if the shape is a rectangle, or the shape field, if the shape is a rectangle, we're going to draw a rectangle with that object and the context. Otherwise, if it's an ellipse, then we're going to draw an ellipse with that context and object. And then if it doesn't match anything, that we're, then we're not going to draw anything of that particular shape. So here we have um, blanking out the canvas. It just uh, draws a rectangle that is, uh, let's see, uh, white, maximum values for red, green, blue, and, a, and a, per, a completely opaque alpha. And we fill it with that, um, I think that's the fill style as a color. So we start um, at 0, 0, and we go to the height and width of the canvas. So we just completely blank this thing out with white. Draw a rectangle gets called from here, and that will take the object. It'll create a fill style variable. If the fill is gradient, then it will fill it with a gradient. Um, we add 5 to the x and y of the object. Uh, this is a hack because the objects that I'm drawing are all 10 by 10, so I'm getting the middle of the object, or you know, one pixel off the middle. And then I create a gradient that is the x uh, plus half the width, 
And so this goes to the, I think this goes to the, what the, no, no, it's the original X and Y. So here we go, I'm getting gradient X and Y will be half the object. But, um, oh, this is getting, yeah, this is getting the middle of the object. And then, um, that's weird, because now it looks like I'm getting halfway from the middle. It looks like I'm going to the outer edge in the bottom corner. Well, whatever. Then we create a gradient, a radial gradient. This creates um, an inner circle and an outer circle, and then uh, goes from one color to the next, from the middle circle to the outer circle. And we use the middle circle is, um, I think zero is gonna be, um, uh, let's see, we did it with gradient X, gradient Y. Yeah, so the inner circle is gonna be, uh, the outer circle is gonna be the width of the object, and the inner circle is gonna have width zero. And that's fairly standard. So it'll, it'll immediately start changing from whatever the first color is to the second color, uh, right from zero out to the edge of the second circle. So we set up these two circles for the gradients. You can look up on the web how to do gradients. And then we set the fill style to be gradient. You see we had our, our variable outside. Otherwise, if it's not a gradient, then we just do, um, we get the uh, fill style from the object itself. And then, um, or we log that rather, and then we grab the red, green, blue, and the um, alpha out of the object that we got. And so now we have our fill style, and then we set that on the context, and then we fill the rectangle from x, uh, y, width, and height. If we draw an ellipse, same thing with all that gradient crap, same circular gradient, and you know, set the fill style, and then we do a path, and we um, we have the path set in the object itself. So we have the X, Y, the number of radians, and the start, uh, the start um, uh, where we want to start, where we want to end. And then we do a line to, um, to go back to the origin. So if we've drawn an arc, uh, how does this work? Begin path, it does an arc. And then we, yeah, if, then if we line to, so if we've drawn an arc, you know, are partially around, then we line to the middle, then it'll automatically, and then we call close path, it'll automatically go out. So if we've left a partial arc, it'll go back to the middle of the arc and then draw out. So this will be the Pac-Man's mouth. And then we close, yeah, close the path, then fill it. So that's it, it's all just drawing code. So I'm just receiving things from the WebSocket and then drawing it out. And then here is where we set up our body. Uh, so when we do onload, we'll call init, then we have a button that'll do start, button that'll do stop, and then we have two canvases, one for the heat map and one for the voids. So that's the web page. It's pretty simple. It just has some code to receive uh, JSON and then draw some particular objects. So it's just a drawing API from a WebSocket.